Hello again to all the cool cats and people out there. It's me talking to you again. And tonight's topic is about video games and specifically the game Cyberpunk 2077, marketing trends and lying, and well, overpromising and underdelivering. Because the game Cyberpunk 2077 is a prime example of what it looks like when you overpromise to your shareholders and underdeliver to the consumers. This game is not finished. It's not finished at all. In fact, it's so unfinished that there's a lot of controversy involved in the game right now because their developer, CD Projekt Red, who's the developer and publisher actually, they hid reviews for the game. As in, they didn't allow anybody to review the game that had it on consoles because the console version of this game was so terrible, so awful, so unoptimized that it was, it's, it's abysmal. It's pretty much, it's pretty much a scam, especially when they purposely hit, did not allow reviewers to see the console version of the game. I have a problem with that and a lot of people do. But as a PC player, you know, I'm playing it on PC, I'm playing it on an RTX card. I had issues with it. The game pretty much always ran smooth for me because I had it on a day one patch. However, for a lot of people, it did not run smooth. In fact, there's for some people that it still doesn't run smooth because there's an issue with the game on it throttling um, CPU and GPUs, which some people on the forums have fixed. But even still, there are quite a few, you know, there's actually many, many glitches in the game and quite a few game breaking bugs. I've had two of them now, I believe. And after the second one, I just stopped playing and uninstalled the game. And I bring all of this up because this has been a market trend in the gaming industry as of the last, what, decade or so. You know, releasing buggy games, releasing games that are in unfinished states. You know, this is the most important part. Selling a product that is unfinished because they know they get patch it later and they know for a fact that the gaming majority for the most part they're going to forgive them you know they're still going to play the game they're going to justify the fact that it's broken you know you're going to have some people who are ultra fanboys you know people who are examples of the sunken cost fallacy who are basically justifying their purchase because they've put money and time into it that they're going to go they're going to forgive the company for doing those things and it's because of that that the industry is at where it's at today and that's absolutely unacceptable. Just like what's unacceptable is the state that this game released in and everything behind it. And what I mean by that is, while this isn't a, a review, you know, this is not my, my style. This is not going to be a complete list of everything because this is more of me talking in an impromptu raw format. However, the gameplay reveal that CD Projekt Red have released in 2018, which is still up and you can watch on their channel, and even the gameplay footage that they uh, the, the official gameplay trailer from three weeks ago as of this recording, which is also on their channel. Both of them are pretty much lies. The latter is being lying by omission because a lot of the things they said are in the game are actually in the game. You do have guns. You do have weapons. You do have a perk system. You can tackle fights multiple ways with shooting or hacking or trying to stealth. And the game is technically open world because you can drive around and look at things. What they don't tell you is that hacking and stealth actually is useless. Hacking has no point as by the time you go through the whole process of hacking somebody, you can already have cleared a room by shooting everybody. Stealth is useless as well because you have to put perk points into it. And by the time you put all the perk points into it for you to be able to get critical headshots while being hidden, you could have already cleared a room by just shooting everybody. It is a matter of fact, the fastest way to do anything because there are zero consequences as the game is not an RPG as it was marketed. They secretly changed the genre to action shooter. Didn't tell anybody. And since it's now an action shooter, these lauded role playing elements, they will like to talk about, you know, how your dialogue choices and your actions in a world will affect the outcome of the world. That actually doesn't matter because it doesn't exist. Now, there are a few story missions where your choices do matter. In fact, one of the only fun moments I've really had in this game was a critical mission halfway through where if you decide to do something with a certain agent or if not, it'll change what the outcome will be. Or you can, you know, go guns blazing at the end, which is what I did because they deserved it. That aside, it's just a small fork in the same road. So you're going straight, the road divides, then it combines again and you're going straight. People that were expecting a Fallout New Vegas type game or even hell, Fallout 1 and 2, which are games that I like, this ain't it at all. Your choices don't matter. I've saved scum quite a few times just to see if I could change the outcome of something. And no, it didn't matter. Nothing you do matters. 
your background doesn't matter. Now, if you haven't played the game, you get to select the background for your character. You get to be a nomad, a street kid, or a corpo. I chose street kid because, well, that's kind of who I am. You know, I, I, that's my environment. So I'm like, cool. You actually get a mission, which is nice. I believe nomad is more fleshed out. I haven't looked at any gameplay of that, and I haven't tried that. Corporal, on the other hand, dear God, dear God, there is nothing in Corporal. What happens in Corporal is you get an introduction, and that's it. I'm not joking. That's literally how it goes. So you get an introduction. You know, there's a weird conspiracy going on, and somebody gives you a, a data chip. You have the mission. You know, it's there. Maybe there's something important on this data chip. Espionage, a conspiracy, something. I need to go figure it out. You go meet up with Jackie. Jackie looks at the chip and he's like, oh, I'm not getting involved with this. This is corporal stuff. And then two jackass corporate agents come along. They take the chip from you and then you get the montage that everybody gets because after you're done your beginning mission or your lack of mission, if you're a corpo, you get a life montage with you and Jackie running around in the streets and doing stuff. Everybody gets the same montage. In fact, speaking of lack of missions, Street Kid technically has a mission but not really. And what I mean by that is there's a guy who owes somebody. So you go to do a favor for him. So you're going to do a mission for the guy that he owes. So his debts get paid off. You're supposed to steal a really expensive car. Now, everything about this mission is suspicious. The fact that it seems a little too easy and blah, 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 blah. It is too easy. Jackie comes. He puts a gun to your head for whatever reason, because maybe he was on the mission, too. And um, then the cops show up. And both of you get your ass beat by the cops who are driving cars. They show up in cars. That's the only time the cops are driving, by the way, because the game actually doesn't have driving AI. I shit you not. But staying on topic, the cops show up, beat your ass. One of the cops has a name and everything. And next scene after getting your asses beat, you guys are in the alleyway making up to each other and becoming friends. And then you get your montage. That's that's your life path as a street kid. Oh, and depending on what you chose, you get additional dialogue options when talking to characters, but it's just fluff. It actually doesn't fucking matter at all. It makes no difference, you know, which is kind of ironic when you think about it, because in the cyberpunk type universes, your choice doesn't matter if you're not a corporal. Your life sucks. You know, you are in a dystopian world and beat down by the capitalistic corporation overlords, you know, that type of stuff. And in this game, you're a street kid getting beat down by the capitalistic corporation overlords. And the emphasis is on street kid, because as I said, your background literally does not matter. Your character's mannerism, the way he talks, his voice inflection, none of that changes. He's a street kid by nature. So even though you're a nomad or a corporal, he'll still have like these really street urban you know, mannerisms that just don't make any fucking sense. There was no reason to include backgrounds. Hell, there was no reason to include character customization. You could have removed both of them and nothing would have changed in this game. In fact, you could even remove the open world element and there's no reason to do the open world stuff and the best part of the game being the story would not have changed. Now, there are some side missions that can change the overall ending of the game, but the side missions for the most part do not matter as after playing a few of them, you come to realize that these are really just different variations of fetch quests. Some of them try to flesh out story characters, but the way things happen is just so abrupt and jarring that I sat there wondering, yo, what the fuck just happened rather than actually caring? Anybody who's played the Evelyn mission with Judy knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to spoil anything, but things happen so abrupt that it's pretty much a script writing nightmare, especially as Evelyn is actually pretty important to the story to begin with. Your first plot point actually evolves around her. If it's not for her, it doesn't exist. And then after that, she's relegated to unimportant side character. And that's pretty much how every character is treated in this game. Do not get attached to anybody besides Johnny Silverhand because he fucking lives in your head. So he's an important main character. You can't get rid of him. But he's obnoxious and annoying. And the only saving grace is the fact that he's played by Keanu Reeves. Because if you remove Keanu Reeves and analyze the character that is Johnny Silverhand, he's Rico from Killzone 2. He's that fucking annoying. His reasonings are stupid. His entire personality revolves around being a revolutionary edgy asshole for the sake of being a revolutionary edgy asshole. His reasonings of why he wants to burn the world down, destroy the corporation like Araska is because he has seen bad things happen and that's it. What stops the characters from being utterly forgettable for the fact of how they're written and how the plot develops, which casts them aside, is the fact that the acting performances are pretty damn good. But what isn't good and I'm finally going to talk about because I love to save the best for last is the gameplay. The gameplay is not good. 
combat for the most part is very stiff which isn't really fun to deal with to begin with but when you add the fact that because it's technically supposed to be an rpg it's not it's a looter shooter game the enemies have at levels that means they're bullet sponges until you level up certain perks combat gets a lot worse when you add in npc allies because of the fact that they don't do anything they literally do not do anything they do no damage and they're actually pretty fucking broken a lot of the times I've seen on numerous occasions Jackie or Rogue shoot at an enemy and then instantly reload their weapon. So they'll shoot, reload, shoot, reload, shoot, reload and do absolutely no damage at the same time while repeating the same obnoxious lines where they tell you to hide before you get spotted even though you're in a full-fledged shootout. Quick, hide. Look, everything. What they also like to do is break your mission. Now the AI programming in this game is pretty bad. The enemy AIs will stand out in the open and get shot at, while at the same time having the most insane accuracy where they're still hitting you behind cover even though they're not using smart bullets. Or they'll charge at you and not care of a fuck about their life, or they'll be blind as fuck, or they'll just straight up break which includes your NPC allies as I've had on multiple occasions where I've had to reload because my ally broke. They froze for whatever reason and made the mission uncompletable. Just like how trigger points can break and make a mission uncompletable. There's a character I had to save who I'm not going to name because it's a spoiler where I clearly pressed F to open the door. It was actually, I have video footage of it. And then I ran around shooting everybody because it's the fastest way to complete anything. Now, one of the last enemies ran into the room that I came from, but he went through a pair of automatic doors that you yourself can't open unless your technical ability is high enough. You know, it's a room to bypass all everybody else, all the enemies in the room. Like, I guess if you want to stealth, even though stealth, it's useless. So I ran back into that room and killed him. After combat ended, the door I pressed F on to begin with was locked. It was stuck. And since I didn't have a technical ability high enough to get through the other door, I pretty much would have been fucked and almost had to reload the save. Except for the fact that there were two other enemies that were desynced out of combat that were around the corner that were still pinged and when I would shoot at them it would cause combat to start which would cause my NPC ally Judy who was just standing still doing nothing it would cause her to move and doing that got her to move towards the door that I could not open the one I didn't have the technical ability that was high enough and it got her to open it which let me run through that door kill those enemies and finish rescuing the person do you see how frustrating that is do you hear how frustrated I am this game is honestly full of bugs that either break missions break immersion or do both the tutorial van chase there is no reason to shoot the enemies in the van besides trying to keep yourself alive which in my case i still died because i had no health bar the first time i did that chase there was no health bar i just up and died the second time i did that mission i was getting shot at but wasn't even getting registered that i got shot at jackie wait am i getting shot come on feet shoot can't keep her steady Oh my, God. my gun disappeared, the enemies in the van then desynced and we were just staring at each other and the van crashes. I did nothing. I did not cause the van to crash. My choices didn't matter there. That van was going to crash regardless. All I had to do was make sure the enemies don't kill me in time so that van will crash. You don't have to shoot the driver even though Jackie tells you to. It's pointless and this is evident in every on rails mission that involves a car. And those set pieces, even though they give you a gun, you actually don't have to do anything. You just have to make sure you don't die so you don't have to reload. The animations will play out regardless and this is very evident in the chase that begins after the prologue finishes. You don't have to do anything. In fact, shooting at the Araska Ninjas is pretty fucking pointless. The cards blew up without me having to do anything. Much like the rest of the game, your choice here does not matter. Your actions here do not matter. You will get to the end as long as they don't kill you. In fact, the only thing that can kill you on a consistent basis in this game are the police, because this game has a wanted system, except for the fact that as the AI don't drive, the cops don't drive up to you. What they do is literally teleport in behind you. They spawn behind you. It doesn't matter where you are. They will spawn behind you. You're, on a, you're in the clouds somewhere on an airplane tip. You can't be on the clouds on an airplane tip, but I'm just using it as a scenario. They will spawn behind you. 
They will always spawn behind you if you commit a crime. No matter if there's nobody else around, you could hypothetically be on the planet Jupiter with the only other human on the planet Jupiter and kill that person and the Night City Police Department would still spawn five feet behind you. It is so bad that they can spawn inside your apartment, which is what I did on accident the first time I played the game, which creates a nice little exploit of foreign police drops as if they spawn inside your apartment or hell, if they spawn outside, you can shoot at them and then run inside your apartment. And even if they're inside your apartment and even if they're shooting at you, if you turn your back on them, they will despawn. In fact, the cops in this game only exist to make your life worse. So let's say that you did a random encounter because there are a few random encounters and they mainly revolve around gang members beating up NPCs. Mind you, you don't have to do any of this stuff to begin with because street cred doesn't matter. You use money and street cred so you could buy augments or buy gear, but you don't have to. Your perk points are good enough and the random drops that you get in missions from killing enemies or open up crates will actually supply you with all the weapons that you need. But going back to the topic, let's say that you do end up doing a random encounter and you're shooting at the enemies, bah, 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 you're blasting at them, you're having a good old time and you accidentally aim at the NPC. Well, guess what, baby? you have a wanted level and guess who's going to spawn right behind you i'm not going to name any names but there were a lot of neckbeards and weirdos that harassed journalists especially if they were a woman for saying that they didn't finish the game and giving a review on it well guess what i also didn't finish the game i made it halfway through and i uninstalled the fuck out of it because there's no reason to finish it this game was not worth my purchase ignoring the hype because i don't really get hyped for anything and paying attention to just how CD Projekt Red marketed the game themselves, the game that they marketed and the game that was released are two different things. Now, Night City is beautiful. And as somebody that is involved in the art field, I love what the art team did in this game. They put in all the works, they put in all the stops, they put in all the love and kudos to them. But that doesn't make a good game. And that doesn't excuse the fact that CD Projekt Red blatantly lied. The game they marketed and the product they released are two different things. They blatantly lied, especially when it comes to the console market, just so they could appease their shareholders because they delayed the game multiple times at this point already. And even then their stock still dripped upon release because of all the controversy and negative commentary about this product. Everything falls on them, not the consumer. Those who are, you know, fanboys who have biases or are using sunken cost policies to try to blame those on old gen for playing the game that was developed and sold on old gen, keyword being sold, those arguments are completely fucking stupid. The blame falls on the developer and the developer alone. Cyberpunk 2077 is essentially a fairy ride, a janky and buggy tourist trip through a beautiful city that is all style and absolutely no substance and with that being said i'll catch y'all in the next video stay safe stay lovely and don't buy this game if you don't have it wait for the definitive edition to come out in about a year or so because you'll be able to get it on sale vincent right i'm angel